So what's the deal with Hollywood and their continual attempt in trying to remake old classic movies? With remake flops like 1998's Psycho or 2015's Point Break or even 2016's Ben-Hur and 2016's Ghostbusters and many, many, many others, it starts leaving people wondering, are they just completely out of new ideas? Most of the time, remakes are just never as good as the original. Matter of fact, people, Christian people, are starting to wonder the exact same thing when it comes to church. This is the Reology Podcast. I can remember when I saw that one of my favorite movies of all time was being remade. It was announced that a new Red Dawn movie was being made and to be released in 2012. My first reaction was this. The original Red Dawn from 1984 is a movie that is near and dear to the hearts of millions and millions of 80s kids like me. And for me, a 14-year-old at the time who wanted to play war games in the woods behind my house, this movie completely captured my imagination. I mean, what would happen if Russia suddenly invaded my small hometown? It was... Well written, well acted, and a classic for sure. A movie that definitely did not need a remake. So the 2012 version came out, and of course, surprise, shocker, it flopped. But, you know, I actually did watch the movie a couple of years after it came out, and I didn't think it was, you know, completely horrible, but it is one of Rotten Tomatoes' worst rated movies of all time. It wasn't that bad, but of course, it was nowhere near the movie of the original. It was okay, but not as good as the original. Now, I stated in the opening that people are starting to feel that same exact feeling when it comes to our 21st century American Christianity. Something just feels off, and especially when it comes to church. In the last few years, I've had several people talk to me about this feeling, and they all pretty much say the same thing. They talk about reading through the book of Acts in the New Testament of the Bible. Now, this book is actually a record of events and people in the very, very early stages of Christianity. It's full of promising and hopeful stories of things that happened to Jesus' followers in and around Jerusalem during the first, oh, 30 years or so, right after Jesus resurrected and then left. First of all, these people were kind of uncertain about their futures. They really didn't know what to do or even what to expect. But Gladly, soon enough, God would send the Helper, His Spirit, or aka the Holy Spirit. And He sent the Holy Spirit into these people's lives, and that moment would be a very dramatic, dramatic event. And it changed them forever. And the people that they came into contact with on a daily basis, they would definitely see this change. And then they would want this change for themselves. So, this history. It's a history of a movement that would be defined by love and rescue and partnership. Not only did it spread throughout the city and around the area around Jerusalem, but it started to spread like wildfire into other areas, even non-Jewish areas. People's lives were dramatically changed. The movement was growing completely out of control. And most of this was happening in the face of opposition and oppression. These people, they were threatened. They were hunted down. They were beaten and even killed. And yet, not only did it grow, but it thrived. So the people that I talk with, they all mention reading these stories, this history in Acts. And then they take a look around at what Christianity looks like today in the 21st century in comparison. 
And they can't help but think and say, what happened? Why does one version look so different from the other? It starts to feel like the remake just isn't nearly as good as the original. But let's be honest, our American culture really kind of gets in the way of any kind of organic movement like this, right? I mean, we don't really experience real persecution these days. We don't leave our jobs typically and go on the road to tell people about the love of God. And we really don't have enough time to contribute to a living partnership with God outside of a couple of hours over the weekend. What we read about in the book of Acts resembles more of an organic, unstoppable movement of love. And then what we experience today resembles more of an uninspiring institutional religion. A generation of Christians are stirring. They are starting to question why. And this questioning typically has absolutely nothing to do with God, because we're not questioning God, but we are questioning what we're doing with what God told us to do. A generation of Christians are questioning why 21st century American Christianity looks so much different from 1st century Christianity. Now, some would say, well, you know, those were ancient times in a different ancient culture, and, you know, things change as if that makes it all good. It doesn't, because that really isn't the answer. Jesus came to us to bring God near. And to me, that does not resemble a religion at all. It looks way more like a relationship, an intimate partnership. One that transcends time and transcends place and transcends culture. So no amount of time or change or culture should really be able to affect the actual source behind this incredible movement. When I myself went through this very same stage of questioning, my stirring led me to first rethink everything I thought I knew. And that was a lot because I'm an ordained minister and I spent over 13 years in full-time ministry. And then I began to research. We simply read in our Bibles a word that connects both the first century and the 21st century together. And that word is the English word church. During this research phase, I quickly learned that we have used this English word church to define a Greek word, which is ekklesia. And I also learned very, very quickly that these two words are actually incompatible. So no wonder things feel off. The word church, it can describe what we've got going on today, but it cannot describe or define what was going on in the book of Acts. Ecclesia, the word that was actually used, is something way more than just church. So when we use that word in both situations, it leaves us scratching our heads and thinking and saying, what happened? Why do they look so different? Well, they look different because they are. Now, I won't go any deeper into all of this, but if you'd like to learn more about that, you can check out our two-part video series called Church is Not the Same as Ecclesia. So recently I have started interviewing these people who God has brought to me, and I've been recording their own individual stirring stories so that others, maybe others like you, could quickly realize that number one, you're not alone. You definitely are not alone. There are many, 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 many people who feel this way. And then two, it's not only okay to question why, it's actually healthy to do so, especially when it comes to growing a relationship with God. So this nonprofit organization that I'm a part of, Rheology, is seeking out those who feel exactly the same way. And we want to help you navigate the waters of your stirring season and help you discover this great 
partnership that Jesus is offering. A partnership to go into our culture, our world, and join him in his great mission of love, rescue, and partnership to the entire world. It's the original movie that should never be remade. Oh, 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 oh